She's one of Britain's most loved actresses with a career spanning over 40 years. That's why I'm so excited to be interviewing Joanna Lundley. She's done it all from modelling to acting to campaigning. And she was and still is one of Britain's most beautiful stars. What kind of mistakes do men like me make? when they're trying to chat up someone, someone like you. It's so funny, you can't make mistakes or... You know, she's a fun-loving alcoholic with a wicked sense of humour. It must have been a great fun part. It's a sensational part to me. It doesn't necessarily give the sense that you've hosted lots of wild, ab-fab-style parties. No, Is that fair or have we? <laughs> I hope you're not too tired, as I know last night you were on set and currently starring as Eleanor of Aquitaine in A Lion in Winter. It's a kind of devious and power-hungry, yet loving and, and beautiful mother. Was that an easy part to play? <laughs> D did I just step into it, my eyes closed? Pretty much. <laughs> it was very, very well written, and the fact that she's based on a real woman was intriguing, because Eleanor of Aquitaine is still included in the lists of the hundred, hundred most famous, richest, grandest, most important people in the world. Eleanor still appears there even though she was the, with the players in 1183. I mean, it's, she was phenomenally powerful and famous, m m unmatched in today's terms, just extraordinary. And it was quite a complicated character because you, you're fighting over which son might inherit mm. the kingdom and, and sort of battling in that way, yet you still have great love for all of the sons mm. and it must have been quite tricky. Yes, and, it's, and the sons all behave like disgusting teenagers, <laughs> all just very bad and rude and horrible uh, to It reminds mother. me of me and my brothers a little bit. <laughs> But it was, it's actually terribly humanly written. And the writer, who um, he wrote it in, in, in uh, 1958, and it was 10 years later that it was made into the famous film with Catherine Hepburn and Peter O'Toole. And now it's been done countless times in North America. This is the first time it's been done in London. It is, and, and I saw the play this week and I, I loved it and I thought you stole the show. And I really wouldn't say that if I, if I didn't think it. Um, but uh, moving on from the play, the other part which you're, you're probably more famous for and you nail every time is Patsy, of course, in Ab Fab which is coming back this Christmas. Yeah. Um, it's 20 years, like this house, it's 20 years since we did the very first Absolutely Fabulous in 1991. And um, the BBC said, ooh, kind of woke up from a trance, went, my God, 20 years. Jennifer, can you write us something? So she wrote three episodes. And two are coming out over Christmas and the New Year. The next one is being put aside for the Olympics. Saved for 2012. Yeah, well, for the Olympics, yeah. It's Olympic-related. OK, brilliant. Well, we look forward to that and for the Christmas ones. And, yeah. w you know, she's a fun-loving alcoholic with a wicked sense of humour. It must have been a great fun it's part to play. sensational part to play. Um, the funny thing was, was that when... It, it's now so familiar in our bloodstream, as it were, Ab Fab. When, it, when the first script arrived through my letterbox, I'd never met Jennifer Saunders, although I'd admired her work. I couldn't believe how breathtakingly cruel and unexpected it was. A totally dysfunctional family. Up until that point, families had been kind of, oh, hmm, the children are being bad, ee, ee, and, you know, he's a bit this and that. But these were v really kind of flesh-tearing ghastlinesses. And it was high satire of the fashion industry, of the PR industry, of women, of sort of ladies who like to lunch, or in Pats, Patsy's case, not lunch ever, because she hasn't eaten since about 1973. Um, had all her organs removed in any case. We just got funnier and funnier. And the more we thought, the more Jennifer wrote, and the more we did it, the funnier it got. Yeah, brilliant. And it certainly stood the test, the, the test of time. And in it, you know, one of the new things which was in it was all this alcoholism, which hadn't necessarily been out before. I know, that's horrifying. Actually, that really shocked me, Wolf, because people would say, oh, we're just like Patsy and Eddie. Kids, it was, we were only joking. We don't, <laughs> we don't actually drink like that or smoke kind of bunches of cigarettes like this. But. Well, you say in, in, the, in the book, which we're going to come to later, that you used to drink water for vodka and ginger ale That's for champagne. Right. Also. Did you ever, you and Jennifer, ever sneak on the real thing to liven no, things never, up? No, never. Never. We're very po Everybody, actors are very po-faced about alcohol because it doesn't help. It's a nightmare. And if anybody, and I have had it, somebody sneaked me something doing a show and I said, have some water, they said, sure. I went, squig, and I'd swallowed it, and it was neat gin. <laughs> it's just ghastly, because what alcohol does is, A, it affects your judgment, so you don't know if you're being funny anymore. You can't judge your timing of being funny. Mm -hmm. And B, it slurs your tongue. You don't think it does. You think you're being brilliant. But it's, um, it's a monster. So be very steady. Be steady with alcohol. Be careful. 
I have to touch on some of your TV commercials as well. Good. I, I, the one I remember in my age is, is the sort of too posh to be privileged one. You don't have to be posh to be privileged. Yeah, well, that, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you see, lorry drivers used to open down there and say, Oh, Joanne, he doesn't have to be posh to be privileged. And I go, yay. I could they almost do that it. one for you as well. But the but funny <laughs> thing is, is the good thing about it is that we know that it's privilege. Well, That's absolutely. the word. No, it's a it got stuck, ad. so it worked. Because a lot of very good ads, you love them, but you can't really remember what the product was. Well, exactly. They confuse you. Yeah. So that one's a brilliant one. And I've also been through um, YouTube to try and find some of the older ones. My favourite being the Nimble Bread advert. Did you see it? Was I it there? It. it was. It's on there. Delicious Nimble Bread. Nimble is for girls like this. At their best in bikinis, fit and slim, nimble and neat. Nimble is for girls who love their bread and know that if they keep to a proper calorie controlled diet, then the light, light, lighter slices of Nimble will help keep them slim and nimble neat. I had to spend two days up diving into the River, Cam the river Cam at Cambridge and it was November, the mid-November, absolutely freezing. And they had a diver in case I got drowned in the weeds. Really? And they kept giving me brandy between takes, and I said, I don't want to drink it. They forced me to drink it because I'd gone blue with gold. Oh, really? And do you, do you enjoy mixing doing your serious stuff with, with more light-hearted, playful things like that? Yes. I mean, com commercials pay like a sack of gold. Acting pays nothing. Acting on stage pays nothing. Um, so you, you p rob Peter to pay Paul. I mean, it's, it's wonderful for the commercial world, who are kind enough to have you, to do two days' shoot where you're treated like a massively pompous film star you know cars sent people doing stuff people having craft tables full of, would you like some stuff fruit grapes people carrying doing your hands and things this sounds absolutely brilliant it sounds brilliant and plenty of money at the end of it whereas acting is quite often the equity minimum which is i can't remember what it is 350 quid a week well well done you for keeping doing the tough stuff then yeah and moving moving on from the um, performing you've brought out this book which is a sort of photographic biography yeah. of your life and I have to say it's so refreshing not to have to thumb through 50 pages, <laughs> 500 pages of small print. Well I've got two more which you have to thumb through well, which are the previous books in a former incarnation. Well, exa well, but this one I wanted to do because it's easy actually just that I just thought people are at the moment they're tired, they're anxious, life is hard. How nice just to flick through somebody else's chaotically hopeless life and go, isn't, doesn't she look revolting in that? Or isn't that funny? Or gosh, I never knew that. Well, there aren't many revolting pictures, for but sure. There are but a few. Let's face it, some of the hairstyles are pretty there's, rare. Well, there's some amusing ones, certainly. I suppose the fact that you have lived your life through a lens, it's unsurprising that there are so many yeah. brilliant pictures. But I'm going to skip straight to my favourite bit, which oh, are the pictures of you modelling in your 20s and 30s. Very good. Um, it's 20s, really. 20s, really. Yeah. Well, I have to say... I sort of feel slightly embarrassed saying this to you now, but some of them are unbelievable. You look incredibly foxy. Um, and this one I settled on in particular. Do you remember that one being taken? Very much. I can't remember the photographer, but I remember those are my own boots. I love those boots. This shirt was a bit of a, a thing, and I, I remember wearing it and thinking, who could ever wear this because there was so much going on? You'd never be able to put your arms into a coat. And the other, the other ones I'm going to have to settle on as well, which are simply stunning, Joanna, and you look amazing in them. Um, oh, those on holiday. On holiday, and this is proper sort of elegance meets Baywatch, I might say. And I'm going to get asked for some tips here. What what kind of mistakes do men like me make when they're trying to chat up someone someone like you? Oh, you're so funny. You can't make mistakes. Well, just be, <laughs> just I I think I think a thing women like. I've noticed this is they love being watched. So if you really really think somebody is fantastic, never let her see you not looking at her. So it's not the play hard to get? No, ghastly. You might, but you've got to have watched her like a hawk. You've got to have stared at her all evening and then leave without saying goodbye. Okay. She'd go, what? Why, 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 why didn't he? I mean, you could have come over. He's bloody staring at me all the time. <laughs> then immediately she's intrigued. And, and moving on from lust, shall we say, on to love, you, you mentioned in the book that you believe in love at first sight. How many times have you experienced that? A... a f a very few, but it, but they were but it was love. I mean, it seems to me love. I think some people are head-turningly wonderful to look at. Um, but it isn't that isn't the thing. Sometimes you meet people, something it's like slamming into a piece of glass door or something. The shock is so colossal that you f feel you have to be with them. Mm -hmm. Have to have have them. They have to be yours. Wow. Well, I have to say, I've, I've not experienced that yet myself. Well, but for pity's sake, start that staring, boy. 
That moody staring, because you're tall enough to stare across the room. Well, I've taken notes. Slight so smile playing on the mouth. Okay. Not, not sneery, not horrifying. Not, not, not you look a jerk smile, <laughs> but about kind of just cool. Oh, work with you very well, well. I'm taking notes. Very good. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and, and would you ever consider doing one of the new reality shows, I'm a Celebrity or Strictly, something like that? With your astute cognizance of the human brain, what do you think my answer well, would be? Well, I'm looking for your answer. I can <laughs> guess what it's what going to be. Th- yes, exactly. Almost certainly not. So absolutely not. But having said that, I don't blame anybody who does it. For a start, I've heard you get a sack of gold for do- doing the uh, j- jungle thing. Mm-hmm. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of the jungle and into the bank as fast as I can. <laughs> um, but I hate that for, for the eating of the cruelty to insects. I'm an animal lover and I'm vegetarian. And I absolutely hate the way they always, it's like kind of playground teasing, you know what I mean? So I hate that with a passion. But good luck to them, do you know mm. what I mean? Well, also, I you can cut that bit out just in case the producers are nice. and want to do something else, put money into a show of mine or something like that. But do you know what I mean? That's the truth. <laughs> for me, you will hate them. Hate them. Although but I however, have to say, you'd be very good on Strictly, though. Strictly is a different thing because I think people, I think this calls back to something which we've stamped out of our lives, which is the love of music. And I don't mean pop music or rap music. I mean actual tuneful music and dancing. And I don't mean nightclub dancing, I mean actually learning how to use your body. These are things people always did right up till about the 60s. We've lost that and people adore it, people love watching it and all the contestants adore doing it and lose four stone in weight so and would love you, that. would you consider doing it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Despite that. Yeah. And moving on to a slightly more serious thing, last, last year you are campaigning for the rights of the Gurkhas. Mm. Did you, ever, did you ever imagine that your campaign would have the profound effect that it did have? I tell you what, we weren't going to stop until we got a result, but we didn't know the result would come in that time. And we were prepared to hang on even up till now. There were five of us doing So we just wanted to make that playing cool. field level. Mm. Well, absolutely, and, and congratulations on that. And my final, final question now, what, what's there to come in, in the future? Is, it, is there anything different that you want to pursue, or, or is it going to be more of the, the glorious saying? You're sweet to say the glorious same. I kind of like things being slightly different. I've had the great good fortune of doing some travel programmes, which are riveting. Um, the good news, they're not only riveting for me and the tiny crew we take, they're about f- five, six of us all together, that's mm-hmm. all. So whether we're doing the Nile or travelling around Greece or going to the Northern Lights or whatever, it's a tiny amount. Um, but people at home love it. Mm-hmm. And so lots of people who will never be able to do those things love it and that's what I love doing because I've always believed that geography and history should be taught together. I believe that we are stupid in how little we teach our children. I think we patronise our children and we patronise our viewers. We don't realise how clever people are and how much they want to know and so I would just like to say here's stuff, here's stuff and you, you'll learn about stuff Not, but I'll learn with you. Look at this, look at this, open up the glories of the world. And try to be happy, try to bring sort of happiness and positivity into people's lives. Not criticise and be bloody awful and down in the mouth about everything. At the moment people are going, oh, what are we going to do? And you go, do you realise we're one of the richest countries on the planet? Do you know, even cutting back by 50% we're going to be richer than anybody else on the planet. Mm. So please, settle down class, you know what I mean? So we've got a little bit wet. And I am Mrs... Get out the cane and a sharpish spanking now and then. Well, that's very refreshing to hear. And Joanna, <laughs> thank you so much. And congratulations from everything from modelling to acting to campaigning. Congratulations and long may it continue. Thank, thank you, you so much. much, Rose. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. Let's not